It's no secret that Jan Tratnik has been on absolute fire this season so far. He's just won the Omloop Het Newsblad, and to call the race thrilling would be an understatement. But not only that, Wout van Aert also took third place in Omloop, which only made the big day for Visma even better. So let's look at how the 2024 Omloop played out and how Tratnik managed to win it from his own perspective. See, Matteo Jorgensen made an impressive move on his debut with Visma Lisa bike, speeding up significantly as he went clear over the famous Kappelmoor with 20 kilometers left. However, pressure from De Lee caused the attack to be stopped on the final climb at the Bosberg, leading to an exciting and attack-filled finish. Niels Pollitt from UAE Team Emirates joined Tratnik, and they had a 15-second lead with 6 kilometers left, but he couldn't quite find the energy to win and ended up in second place behind the Slovenian. That's why, in an interview after the race, Tratnik said, I am a little bit surprised. We knew we had a strong team for the classics, and I came here more as a domestique role. I could be behind and save the legs. We had five guys on the front to chase, and in the end, it was just a case of keeping believing. I counterattacked, and I made it. Van Aert surged ahead from the groups that came back together, increasing the pace and spreading out the riders in the final 10 kilometers. Then he won the sprint among the rest of the riders, securing first and third place for Vismalis a bike in the first classic race of 2024. What's worth pointing out, though, is that Pollitt simply didn't have the legs to outsprint Tratnik at the finish line. The German, who came second in the 2019 Paris-Roubaix, couldn't match Tratnik's rocket fuel when he made a move for the win, especially since the Visma rider was holding back a bit while teammates were chasing behind. After the race, Pollitt said, I knew in the back that there were some fast guys in the group, so for me to take the second place, it's a great result, considering the situation. Our plan was that Tim Wellens would try something on the moor, and I was covering a bit in the back. I made it back to the front, and I saw that Tratnik was going, so I decided to move. Lotto led the frantic chase from behind, with Van Aert and others joining in. The gap was narrowing as they approached the finish line, but it was too late. A notable moment at the Omloop was when Jorgensen surged ahead from a group of six attackers, reaching the famous Kapelmoor climb with a 20-second lead over the chasing pack. His teammates Van Aert and Laporte were among the pursuers, along with De Lee from Lotto, Pidcock from Ineos Grenadiers and Skuinch from Little Trek. De Lee was in front of the chasing group, Pidcock fell behind and the group that had been trailing by a minute caught up quickly. Tim Wellens from UAE Team Emirates also made a strong effort to catch up with the chasers as they approached the final climb up the Bosberg. The biggest surprise at this point was the fact that Tom Pidcock got dropped, which he also commented on after the race, saying, I was feeling good but I blew up in the end. These races are so difficult and we started racing at 30 kilometers into the race. We were up the road with a gap and things were looking promising, but I didn't have the legs in the end. That's how it is. Things just kicked off early and the peloton was breaking up on the first hills already. After that, pressure from behind reduced Jorgensen's lead to eight seconds as they approached the final climb at the Bosberg. Suddenly, the situation changed as the leaders and a chasing group came together, setting the stage for the grand finale. And so, the group was formed, including Van Aert, Laporte and Jorgensen, from Visma Lee's A Bike, along with Pidcock, De Lee and the impressive Squinch. Visma's Benut said, We had a plan to go after 50 kilometers and we went full. I was in the second group when I saw the big bunch coming back. We could save our legs in the bunch. That's why it was so close in the end and why two guys in the end who were not in the front all day with Pollitt and Jan could win the race. With 30 kilometers left, it seemed like there wasn't a coordinated effort to catch up from behind. The expectation was that the winner would emerge from the front group, but things didn't happen that way. Julien Alaphilippe, who was recently criticized by the Soudal Quickstep boss for his lack of professionalism, got caught in a crash with the chasing group around 25 kilometers before the finish line. He couldn't get back into the race, Jorgensen made a move around 20 kilometers before the finish line to create some distance from the others in the chasing group. He managed to build a 20-second lead by the time they reached the base of the Campbell Moor. At the same time, Pidcock fell behind, and at that moment, the chasing group, which had been trailing by about a minute, quickly closed the gap. After regrouping over the Bosberg, the chasers set the stage for an exciting finale with lots of attacks and responses. And that's exactly why the 2024 Omloop provided an exciting start to the Spring Classics, promising more action to come. 
But we still haven't said enough about Jan Tratnik himself, who's been great this entire start of the season and showed his greatness yet again in this very race. Tratnik, who is 34 years old, has had some decent results in spring races before. He finished 12th at the 2022 Tour of Flanders and also got a top 10 spot at Dwarves Door Vlaanderen three days earlier. While he wasn't one of the top favourites for his second Omloop, being part of the strongest team likely gave him an advantage. At the post-race press conference, he said, Maybe I didn't believe enough in the morning or before that I can win this, because I know I got chances last week in Algarve and in Spain. But I also know that here we have such a strong classics team. But in the end, I believed in the last kilometre that I could win. So it was good. Tratnik broke away from the pack about eight kilometres before reaching Ninov. He was joined by Niels Polit after they both caught up with the front of the race on the last climb, the Bosberg. His teammates from Visma Lise, a bike, Van Art, Laporte, Benut, and Matteo Jorgensen had been leading in a shrinking group since 130 kilometers remained, causing the peloton to break apart due to strong winds. Tratnik mentioned that he was near the front when the split occurred, but missed it due to a minor error while cornering. He said, When we started the echelons, I started with Wout and Affini, but then in one corner, I did one mistake because I broke too much and I lost 10 positions. Then the team put it in the wind again, and I think I was one of the last who dropped. But in the end, we had five guys at the front and me and Dylan behind. So for us, it was just about staying behind, controlling attacks, and then trying to race if it comes together. He thought the race wouldn't regroup because the front runners were more than a minute ahead with 30 kilometers left. However, by then, the group had shrunk to just six riders before Jorgensen made a solo break just before the Moor van Geraardsbergen. At that moment, Jorgensen seemed poised for victory, but the official time gap revealed that the riders behind, including Tratnik, were quickly closing the distance. The way Tratnik described it was as follows. Suddenly the gap came down, and in the final 20 kilometres, it was just about trying to stay on the front and believe. The attack was just instinct. The race was so hard in the last two or three hours that I just took two breaths, and then I could see that all guys were stopping, and I came from behind with the speed. I heard that I had a gap, but not more, because there was a lot of talk from the directors. If such a big name in cycling tells you to go, then it gives you wings. The biggest problem was how to win in the sprint, because Christoph and Wout are really fast in the sprint, but I'm 65 kilograms, and I'm not. We raced to win, and in the last two kilometers, I realized I had a bit of responsibility for that. I knew that Niels was also strong in the sprint, so I wasn't sure if I could do it, but I think I played a good kilometer and I didn't come to the front. Tratnik stayed close behind Pollitt as they approached the finish line in Ninove. Then he made his move, darting past Pollitt to claim victory. This win marked the most significant achievement of his career, matching his breakaway stage victory in the 2020 Giro d'Italia in San Daniele del Friuli.